A manor house was built on the site along with accompanying buildings. George called it Thorpe Hall after Elizabeth's place of residence in Yorkshire. Back then the area was a mixture of farmland and woodland. Some of you may remember a shop on the junction of Hallam Road and Thorpe Hall Road. This has since been turned into housing. Nowadays only one local convenience store remains in the area. According to old maps, the location of the manor house and other buildings were positioned in these places within the school grounds. George continued to write here and Thorpe Hall was described as the poor house at Walthamstow in the forest. The sketch on the left shows Gascoigne presenting one of his books to Elizabeth I. She was the queen of the time and some say an admirer of George's written work. The young William Shakespeare was also said to be a fan of Gascoigne. Did you know that George Gascoigne's actions nearly changed the course of British history? He accidentally frightened the horse on which the queen was riding and it nearly injured her. It could have been much worse. Gascoigne soon fell out of favour within royal circles and his work fell under the spotlight of Elizabethan censors of the time. Jules decided enough was enough. He got fed up and decided to go to Holland. Whilst in Holland he joined the Dutch Protestant army under the stewardship of William of Orange who was also known as William the Silent. The Protestants battled the Catholic army of the Duke of Parma for many years, but George Gascoigne decided to return to England after two years of armed service. Upon his return to England, George continued writing, but this time for the Earl of Leicester. Things were looking up at last, but he got ill and died in 1577, aged 41. Gascoigne was born into a rich family and his life was a series of ups and downs, made worse by his love of adventure, high living and a certain lack of respect for authority. Unfortunately, he was only recognised as a great writer after his death. He is said to be buried in Stamford in Lincolnshire, though some say he is actually buried in St Mary's Churchyard in Walthamstow Village. Not far from Thorpe Hall is Wood Street. The old library was located here. Famous names linked to Waltham Forest were inscribed on its outside walls. These included George Gascoigne. The library has since been relocated and replaced by housing. So why wasn't Thorpe Hall Primary School named after its most famous resident? At the time there was already a secondary school in Walthamstow named after George Gascoigne. This was located in Queen's Road E17. According to research, the school on the Queen's Road site was renamed George Gascoigne Secondary School in 1933, two years before Thorpe Hall opened. It closed in 1966 and became the Waltham Forest Teachers Centre. It was then demolished to make way for the new Edinburgh Primary School. A newspaper report from March 1962 identified a site for the new George Gascoigne Secondary School just off Markhouse Road, E17. However, this never materialised and it would eventually become the home of the St Saviour's Church of England Primary School.
Suddenly the world came to a stop. War was declared in September 1939. According to the school logbook, children were initially evacuated at the start of September 1939. They would depart from Walthamstow Midland Station on the 5pm train. Thorpe Hall would not open again for eight months. Pupils were sent to places such as Bedfordshire and Wales. Not everyone enjoyed the experience. Just as frightening as the V2 rockets were what were known as doodle bugs. These were unmanned rockets which came overhead, making a strange noise, and then the engine cut out, so you knew it was going to crash somewhere, but usually you didn't get time to find a shelter. We were in the main hall having our lunch when the rocket dropped. These rockets were very frightening as they didn't make a sound so you didn't realise they were coming until it dropped causing much damage and killing many people. When the rocket dropped I remember the windows being blown in and a piece of the wood, wooden frame fell across my back and there was a great deal of debris littered everywhere. Our parents came rushing to the school because it was thought that the rocket had dropped on the school. We all went home but soon came back after the debris had been cleared away. It appears the rocket was fired from Holland. Unfortunately, seven people were killed. I think it was so lucky to have missed the school. This is Mr John Farr, one of Thorpe Hall's cherished and much respected volunteers. John's association with the school lasted 13 years and he worked with a variety of staff and pupils in that time. Mr Farr worked in the medical corps during World War II. He had a lucky escape. A week after leaving the hospital troop ship, the Strathallan, it was torpedoed off the North African coast. He sadly passed away in 2013. He was 93 years old. This Viraline classic was his favourite song.
In 2012, the school received funding to expand. A new junior block dining hall and additional facilities were planned to accommodate an expected rise in admissions. ex Paul pupil and former head teacher Paulette Houghton led the campaign with a dedicated team to push through the expansion. Thorpe Primary School finally incorporated the land behind the school known as Railway Terrace. This disused and derelict piece of land had become prone to fly tipping, littering and vandalism. For many years Thorpe Hall's head teachers had campaigned for the site to become part of the school. This was finally achieved in 2014. Before Railway Terrace became part of the school, pupils would join in an annual spring clean of the site. This was part of their community service. Do you remember making this journey down the corridors? Through these doors was once the old primary block, which housed some of the junior classes and library.
Looking on to the quiet area today, in the past it was where the school sports days took place. A father skipping race back in the summer of 1963. The legendary sports day sack race taking place in front of the old hall at Thorpe Hall. I moved into the area in July 1967 from South Tottenham. I didn't attend Thorpe Hall because I was 14 at the time. However, I was invited to attend the Forest Community Association Sports Day, which was held at Thorpe Hall. This included a children's pageant, which I took part in. Surprisingly, I won the Association Queen's Award, which meant I could open the summer fete at the nearby community centre the following year. My association with Thorpe Hall didn't end there. I became a midday assistant from 1980 to 1984 and I was encouraged to do my NNEB at Waltham Forest College. This was my nursery nurse exam qualification and I went back to Thorpe Hall as a second year student in 1985. Eventually I became a permanent member of staff and joined the school in 1998. I enjoyed my time at this school and retired in 2016. Miss Cobbledick retired in 1970 after seeing Thorpe Hall's transition into a primary school in 1969. Mrs Rutter took over as headmistress and wrote about her experience in the school's logbook. This is an extract regarding her first day at Thorpe Hall in September 1970. Today I held my first staff meeting at Thorpe Hall. Term begins tomorrow and I look forward to meeting the whole school. We met today to plan the term and to meet each other for apart from myself, there are eight new members of staff. Mr Powling was passionate about the creative arts and worked on transforming the old school hall. Lighting was added and assemblies, productions, school photos and meetings were held in this space. What do you remember about your time spent in here? Photo opportunity, singing assemblies and PE lessons. Productions and class assemblies. Thorpe Hall got creative in 1985 when the school celebrated its Golden Jubilee 50th anniversary. P 
pupils got to take part in a variety of activities and even interviewed past head teachers about how the school had developed. A special commemorative book was made, highlighting how Thorpe had changed over the decades. Mr Powling returned to Thorpe Hall in 2010 to take part in the school's 75th anniversary celebrations. By 1986, Thorpe Hall had a new head teacher. Mrs Shirley Davies would take over for Mr Powling, who had departed a year earlier. Mr Powling would then further use his educational knowledge and understanding to enhance literacy skills for children. He also became an accomplished author. The changing face of technology. Thorpe Hall pupils continued to persevere. The pupils on the left are holding a piece of musical equipment called an Omnicord, which they received from the local newspaper. In 1996, Mr Bradley Ray became the new head teacher. School secretary Mrs Jean Clark retired after nearly 30 years of service to Thorpe Hall. The Charlton Athletic fan had worked with numerous staff and three head teachers during her time at the school. Friends and family, as well as past and present staff, turned up at her farewell event in the school hall. Girls football arrived at Thorpe Hall in 1998. A year earlier, Thorpe Hall had lost heavily at this very venue to Barclay in a friendly. However, the school team won their first ever match convincingly 4-1 against the same opponents in the league fixture. What a difference a year makes. Football finally came home 20 plus years later, as Thorpe Hall were crowned champions of Wolfham Forest. It is with great pleasure that I reopen this logbook in this historic millennium year. To mark the occasion, everyone in the school will sign the book and put in their special class message for the millennium. It is impossible not to be touched and fascinated by the entries made by previous headteachers since the school opened on 7th January 1935. My message is to wish for peace, happiness and success to everyone who is fortunate enough to be part of the community that is Fort Paul. Ex-pupil Paulette Houghton became the school's permanent head teacher in 2002. She had previously been Fort Paul's deputy head and acting head. Mrs Houghton had attended the school as a child, as had her mother Priscilla, who had been an evacuee during World War II. Both Mrs Houghton's children would also go on to attend Thorpe Hall. During Mrs Houghton's time as head, the school received an unexpected visitor. A London Air Ambulance made an emergency landing on the school field to assist with an accident nearby. Unlike the helicopter, the Metropolitan Police were invited to visit the school and they brought along two of their police horses. The officers gave a talk to the children about their roles in the mounted branch. Thorpe have always had a reputation for competing in a variety of events be it chess, swimming, athletics, cricket, carnival, etc.
However, their most memorable successes came on the football pitch. One of their biggest achievements was in the 2006-2007 season, when the Green Army won the Central League, Birmingham Cup, McEntee Cup and the Soccer in Schools Trophy. The quadruple winning squad returned to the school to take part in a fundraising match in 2013. No, your eyes do not deceive you. Shirt sponsorship had come to primary school football. The school team won two trophies in the 2011 and 2012 season. The players are wearing the school's away kit of black and white. In 2010, the Thorpepool School community celebrated its 75th birthday. A party was held in the top playground and field. West Ham and Northampton footballer Bobby Barnes from the Professional Footballers Association visited the school to see the pupils work on World War I and footballing legend Walter Tull. As part of their history topic the children found out about the events of World War I. They organised a special fundraising match at the school. The event raised £300 for a cancer charity. Part of their history project work, the children were invited to Northampton Town to find out about the club's former player, Walter Tull. Walter Daniel Tull had been Britain's first black army officer and served with distinction during World War I. He was also an accomplished footballer. We were given a tour of the ground and visited the Walter Tull Memorial at the Sixfield Stadium.
The children even got to be the guard of honour for the cobbler's match at Tranmere. However, our project work related to World War I wasn't over. Thorpe Hall was one of 10 schools chosen nationwide to take part in the centenary event to mark the Battle of the Somme. The children visited Clapton FC where Walter Tull started his footballing career. They got to play on the pitch at half time in front of nearly 500 fans. The children enjoyed the experience of playing on the same pitch as Tull and received a signed Clapton FC shirt as part of their Somme centenary project work. Next stop was Leighton Orient, where pupils found out about the sacrifice the club made during the First World War. Three Orient players lost their lives at the Battle of the Somme in 1916. The children again received a signed shirt for their project work. The area outside the school's library was turned into a SOM topic display showcasing the children's work. The school's admin staff worked hard in preparing the children's forthcoming trip to France. These year six pupils would represent the school at the SOM memorial event. Royal dignitaries were also in northern France. One lucky thoughtful pupil got to meet a future king of the United Kingdom. Remember school trips to Epping Forest and Suntrap? Children from Waltham Forest continue to visit Suntrap to this day. Remember when the school community came together at Saturday Summer Fates. How about school residential trips to the Isle of Wight and Lambourne End? Adults of a certain generation will remember the Look and Read series to aid literacy skills in school. The school expansion saw a new kitchen and dining hall installed at Thorpe Hall. Gone were the days of dining in a porter cabin and the old school hall. This new space enabled the school to also hold assemblies and meetings and welcome special guests such as Emma Watson. Emma Watson!
<laughs> I started playing hockey when I was about your age, and so I'm really excited to be here with you today and hoping you can teach me some tricks. It's been a little while since I played, so maybe you can like update my skills. As with World War II, the world faced an unprecedented event. In the early part of 2020, Thorpe Hall was closed to the majority of its pupils. The whole world, as well as the school community, had to adapt to a new way of teaching and learning. Online learning became common practice for many. However, the school adapted and supported each other through the COVID crisis. More Thought Paul related videos are available at the end. Click the links to find out why Spitfire flew over the school and why an ex-professional footballer took part in a class assembly. More information about Thought Paul is available in the description section of this video. Thank you for watching. Thank you Thought Paul.